is for dog owners who love to go out and do things with their dog. Um, so Puptopia Festival is for them, like dog parents. Um, most of the people who come to this festival are between 25 and 35, don't have kids, their dog is their kid. So these are the type of people that take their dogs to bars, buy their dogs dog clothes, buy their dogs all these collars and leashes all the time, different accessories, you know, they're the ones who are constantly looking to spoil their dog, love on their dog, and have fun experiences with their dog. So we thought about things like, what would dogs like to do? Well, they like high fire hydrants. Let's make a big giant fire hydrant. Let's make a big giant bowl with balls in it. Um, all kinds of things. A spa where we have a massage therapist in there showing owners how to massage their dog. So different ways and touch points um, that owners can connect with their dog and have a great day with seeing their dogs be happy around other dogs as well. We came last year. Last year was our first event and he had so much fun. I mean, he's a puppy still, he's only two. So this is a good way just to let out some energy and get out of the, now that summer's over and the heat, he loves to be outside. So that's one of the best things about this place. I will do anything with my dog and I thought it would be so fun. I love meeting other dog owners that are as obsessed with their dogs as I am. We're pretty new to being dog owners. He's only six months old and so we just kind of wanted to meet other people with dogs and just give him a fun time. Yeah, just have him socialize with other dogs. He's the only dog at home right now, so yeah. She was with me always, so she comes to work with me. Like, we, and if I'm going somewhere and she's allowed, she's coming. So I do everything with her. The age group that we know we have coming here, they want to create memories and experiences with their dog, and Puptopia definitely lends itself to creating a whole day's worth of experiences with their dog. We call this like an amazement park for dogs, and they get to have that kind of connection and do these fun activities um, with each other. We hope people leave um, and hoping they had a great day with their dog and leaving just having that like fun feeling like the humans and the dog interaction and they just left having like this great amazing day full of activities that they got to do with their dog. So we always had dogs growing up. My parents had uh, Chinese Sharpays, so they did show stuff. So they were always showing dogs, breeding dogs, that kind of stuff, you know, growing up. So there's always dogs in my life. And I mean, I've always had that connection with dogs that, that made me feel comfortable, right? Made me feel comfortable, it was a cool thing to do. I mean, it's a companion, right? So it always started off as a companion and then learning further into their capabilities and what they can do as an asset. I mean, it was just, this is the direction I wanted to head. I started working with dogs in the military. Uh, when I joined the military in 2002, they came out and did a canine demonstration and I thought that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. And uh, that's the first thing I asked, like, how do I do this? Started spending most of my time, my off time over in the kennel work a 14, we're on 12, so it ends up being 14 hours you're there. And that's, you know, ended up being there for a couple more hours. So about 16 hours a day I was working, going home, sleeping for a few hours and going back and doing it again the next day. The military, I think, kind of ruined my, the way I feel about dogs in my house at this point. They're our partner, but they're also, a, the military teaches us a tool, right? It's a tool for us to be able to use for our deployments to save our troops and everything else. So you kind of, lose that I'm super attached to a family member. Military dogs stay at a kennel. When you get there, you're assigned a dog. You could be on this dog 
for six months assigned to it and they swap dogs or the dog gets retired and you don't have the option to keep that dog so it's not really a pet you rotate through dogs you change bases the dog stays there you get a new dog you know you're living with this dog everywhere you go this dog's going with you for eight ten months however long you're there some people a year and you get back and it goes to a kennel it's no longer attached to you it has to stay in a kennel and then you leave and go to a different base and i mean you, you basically lose connection with that dog these dogs have to be super confident everywhere they go uh hitting again the difference between a house pet and a police dog is a lot of your house pets are super confident in their house but that's all they know because they haven't been say environmentally sound but the police dogs they have to be able to do their job in rain storm chaos going on sirens going off they have to be confident enough to do it in any situation without hesitation i'd say about 98 percent of what we train is narcotics dogs we're in texas there's a lot of illegal narcotics coming across the border every single day so we're in a i say target rich environment for that so most of what we do is narcotics dogs the bomb dogs i specifically look for something that's different something that that just it's a feeling that i have like this is a very good dog for a bomb dog so and and i pick those out i don't just throw it at somebody because coming from the bomb dog background searching for roadside bombs and weapons caches i kind of have that real world experience with something that's near and dear to my heart the dogs are in airports um they're down the border searching for you know illegal narcotics coming back and forth uh, i mean we've there's dogs that are searching ports for bed bugs tobacco i mean we've got dogs that pretty much span for any industry that you could need that for i mean dogs are even doing concert venues i mean you can go to a concert venue and they're sweeping it prior to with an explosive dog to make sure no one's trying to you know blow up for mass casualty thing at the entire event i mean that's thousands of people the capabilities of the dogs and the places they're at i mean they're around us every day we may not see them they were there before you ever got there but all your sporting events all your concert venues are swept beforehand i mean doing what i do is awesome right um it's coming from the military and doing two tours in iraq Having that, I mean, I found about 24,000 pounds of explosives while I was there. Uh, I found a vehicle-borne IED on my very first mission, which was meant to pull up maybe in the middle of a convoy, entrance of a base, and just, I mean, basically just kill everybody. Uh, going from that side in combat situations to train these dogs to help our communities, seeing the impact that they have in these communities it's a great feeling. Um, do I miss working a dog every single day? Absolutely. But the success stories of these large drug busts and uh, the differences they make in their communities or the dog saving an officer life or somebody's life, that's rewarding, super rewarding to me to be able to get those text messages Hey, my dog did this today. Hey, thank you so much. Um, I don't know. It, it makes everything that I that I go through worth it. You know, owning a business is great, but I'm not one of those people that's in here to for a quick buck to get rich. I do this because I love it. It's my passion. My wife's a police officer, so I think I've got that much more of a connection to the industry that well, I guess a lot of people don't have because I mean, I've got. My spouse is living and doing this every single day. But teaching the handlers at this point and being them successful is, I don't know, probably the best thing I could ever think of right now.
So the Round Rock PD canine program is one that has definitely evolved uh, over the years. Um, we have seven canine teams. We have six narcotics detection dog canine teams. Um, and then we have one canine team that focuses solely on explosives and we supplement the patrol division. The canine team is out there every day uh, working side by side with other people in this, other officers in the city. Uh, the goal is to uh, help them out in any way that they, they see uh, or deem necessary. Most of what we see is deployments on vehicles for narcotics detection. Um, and then also our dogs are disciplined in article searching. So there's, there's an array of things that we can do to, to assist the, at the patrol level, uh, in addition to also attending community affairs events, kind of uh, mingling with, with the, the community and, and the city. Our canine teams are embedded in, in the shift, so um, they're, gonna, they're gonna respond to a lot of calls uh, with their canine handler and they're just an added resource that we have uh, out there on the street uh, should that be necessary. I think the most that our canine teams see are deployments on vehicles. Little bit of article searching and, and a few tracks here and there come up, but mostly what they're gonna see is deployments on cars, trucks, vehicles of, of any shape and size. The impact that they have is so far reaching. Uh, for an example, we had one of our uh, canine handlers did a simple traffic stop and that traffic stop led to the canine deployment. That canine deployment led to the arrest of uh, the violator, the driver of the car, and that led to uh, an investigation that was transferred over to our detectives division and it reached all the way to the federal level and became to a point where there were officers, detectives involved in other countries, not just here. And it all stemmed from a simple traffic stop. These dogs, they, they don't really realize that they're doing a job. They think they're playing a game and we're part of that game, right? So this is why we make training fun. We make the deployments fun, right? So they don't realize that their actions are uh, putting people uh, in prison for a long time uh, because of the, you know the level of narcotics that they might find um, with this with my dog that I have now which is a Veda uh, she's a six-year-old Belgian Malinois uh, one of the deployments that we had uh, assisting another officer on an interdiction style stop on the interstate um, again she doesn't know the level of narcotic that's in there she thinks that that we're just playing a game and it involves the car and, and the reward at the end if she you know is able to get to source or find the source um, and in that case there was um, 70 pounds of liquid meth in the gas tank of a car and we would not have known that unless uh, Veda had led us to that right so uh, I think that's pretty amazing that um, a dog can can sift through all those odors on a vehicle and be able to, to, to tell you definitively that one of the odors that they're trained and certified to detect is, is in that vehicle, right? So that, that's pretty amazing. That, that one example there, 70 pounds of liquid meth off the streets, just, just imagine how far that would have gone in the, in the country and to how many people that would have been distributed to and that could have led to um, someone maybe using narcotics for the first time and they overuse or now we have the threat of fentanyl being added into all the narcotics so if we stop that if we just stop that one load that could affect tens tens of thousands of people down the way because 70 pounds of crystal meth, or 70 pounds of liquid meth that by the time they cut it and, and develop it into what they're gonna sell and push out on the street that's so, that's so far reaching, you know? I think one of the most important things is uh, that people understand that um, they're not just a tool to us. The canine's not just a tool to a canine handler. They're our partner and they kind of become, uh, for lack of a better term, kind of your best friend. Uh, you're with that dog more than any one person in your family. 
They go to work with you, they go home with you. Some vacations, they may still go with you. Uh, so you're with that dog more than anybody. Um, and that dog would do anything to, to protect, uh, to, to make us happy. All they want to do is please us uh, as the handler. Uh, and that's pretty important. Um, we refer to them sometimes as a tool and as a resource. Uh, and that's, that's how they're viewed. Uh, from an organizational standpoint, but from the handler, that's not the only thing that they are to us. So uh, it's, it's that I don't think you can put a price tag on the bond that you build with your canine partner. Um, so yeah, if, I think if I wanted to just have people understand the importance that, that a canine, that a working dog has um, on well, from so many different levels, the handler specifically, but to the community, to the country, uh, it's, uh, it's more than can even be explained in a few words.